we've all faced a lot of problems during the pandemic. Not seeing friends, of course, many of us have lost loved ones. Now runaway inflation, baby formula shortages. So this latest problem might seem small, almost insignificant of an inconvenience, but it is not. Hence why we are doing a story now about cheese. Turns out about half of the Parmesan cheese you buy and spend more and more money on every day might not actually be Parmesan cheese, specifically Parmigiano Reggiano, which clearly my Italian needs some work, but there you go. Sales last year of the real thing, the real Parmesan, or what Americans call Parmesan, comes from just a few parts of Italy. That reached $2.7 billion. The copycat fake stuff brought in $2 billion. Now, the real thing might come with microchips implanted in the rind. Thus, the cheese police, also known as customs officials worldwide, can start to track if the counterfeit stuff is coming to a grocery store or cheesemonger near you. Adam Moskowitz, cheesemonger, head of Larkin Cold Storage, that imports cheese worldwide into the United States. You think about this, and I guess the most obvious comparison is like the fake Rolex you buy on the, on the street in New York, right? Except you're not putting it in your mouth, you're not eating it. That, that seems a lot more risky, right? Uh, yeah, well, that's exactly right, though. This is exactly like somebody knocking off coach bags or Fendi's, but this is in the name of cheese. Yeah, but one, one of our producers Wait. who uh, who's Italian... I just said it hurts my ears when you try to speak Italian, so I will not again. But is, is it easy to knock this off? What makes this cheese so special and valuable? Well, a variety of reasons. First, it's been made for, for like literally thousands of years. Second, it's, it's from a specific region of Italy. There's a specific milk type that's required for it, specific starter cultures in rennet that started for it. Only certain affinores could age it. Uh, so it's, it's, it's the king of cheese, in fact. Um, uh, how? So to, so is, to, is so the, to is, knock, it's not so much knocking it. The, sorry, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. It's not so much knocking it off, but what? Yeah, I mean, well, it's 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 not it's 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 copying the name, right? So it's not like actually like like if you were to ask if you were to put two cheeses in front of me and ask me if one was Parmigiano Reggiano and one was not, I'd be able to tell the difference just from flavor. What they're capitalizing on is the name Parmigiano Reggiano, right? Which is a protected name, and so what what counterfeiters are capitalizing on is this recognized name and selling an inferior product, but trying to capitalize on the name. Right, and, and I guess now that all this stuff is so much more expensive during the pandemic and people are eating in, so they're buying more cheese uh, from cheesemongers and the like, it's become a really huge business, right? Yeah, I mean, cheese is a huge business and people trying to sell more cheese is a huge business. And yes, there's things like inflation right now, supply chain issues, et cetera, that are driving up the price of cheese. So are there retailers and or consumers looking for a less expensive cheese? Possibly. But from my experience, those that love cheese, who will call turophiles or cheese enthusiasts, cheese lovers, they're looking for the real thing. And it's pretty easy to actually figure out whether it's the real thing or not. Like these microchips that people are talking about, I don't buy it and I don't see it stopping counterfeit. In fact, if you're a real Parmigiano Reggiano, you have a certain marking on the cheese and that can't be duplicated. And that could be identified by the cheesemonger. Said another way, real cheesemongers, they don't want to sell fake cheese. They want to sell the real Real cheese. Well, good, good, good point. And, and real, real stores don't want to sell fake goods in the like. But it, it comes back to this whole thing that, for say, the moderate cheese enthusiast like myself, and someone says, "Oh, this is Parmesan. I think I'm getting the real thing, or I think I'm buying the real thing, and instead I'm getting the knockoff." How is this different than like what we always hear about Napa wine or champagne or whatever that that it's actually a protected name around the country or world? Well, so. Well, so first, you, you keep saying Parmesan, and that in and of itself is an example of what we're talking about, right? That you're not saying Parmigiano Reggiano. The Parmesan that we know, P-A-R-M-E-S-A-N, that's a play off the word Parmigiano Reggiano, allowing consumers to think they might be getting shredded Parmigiano Reggiano, but they're not. They're getting Parmesan. Um, so, it, but to your point, right, like there's sparkling wine and then there's champagne. Right. And, and an example of this might be considered uh, Reginito, 
right? There was an Italian immigrant that went to Argentina, and these Italian immigrants in Argentina wanted to create something that reminded them of home, and they created what they call Reginito, which in size and shape is not at all like Parmigiano Reggiano. In flavor and texture, it might be considered very similar. Um, and that's actually why the consortium that protects Parmigiano Reggiano was actually created in order to stop people from I, I, doing things like. I, I totally love this. But we, we, we heard now about this $2.7 billion in the real stuff and $2 billion yep. in, the, in the knockoff. So is the knockoff yep. Parmesan that I, I that I of course would think would be real, but you know shredded cheese in the cheese aisle that says Parmesan, or is the knockoff actually looking exactly like the real thing with all the markings? I would think that the knockoffs are more like something that you might find in a restaurant, like an Italian restaurant, where they bring grated cheese to your table. Or you might find it actually in, let's say, big, big box retailers where it's cut up in wedges or cut up in chunks. Um, but if you're going to an actual cheesemonger, if you're going to what we call a cut to order cheese shop or specialty food shop, it's very unlikely that you're getting the knockoff. Oh, right. If you, if you go to, the, if you go to the, the real Fendi store or the real Chanel or Coach or whatever it is, you're not going to get a knockoff. It's great. Hey, Adam, you're... Go ahead. No, that's exactly okay. right. There are some people that want the knockoffs because they don't want to pay the right, premium you know, dollar for the premium product. I, I, just while I have you, we keep hearing about supply chain and, and, all, and all of the inflation. I'm guessing that that's a huge thing for you guys, too. 100 percent. What, what's shocking to me is that I didn't realize and a lot of us didn't realize that Ukraine is a source of a lot of raw materials such as corn, wheat, etc. Yeah. And those types of materials go into the, f the feed that feed the animals. So, in fact, I'm seeing incredible price increases yeah. from all over my European producers, especially Italy, because of the war in Ukraine. Wow. Add that to the supply chain issues. The maritime the maritime industry is broken right now. I've been doing wow. this for almost well, yeah, 20 and years. Now, yeah, we We're heard about you. We, we've done it on the show here, talking about big price increases in the U.S. in terms of feed and grain and everything else. Adam, your uh, enthusiasm for cheese is infectious, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.